Okay, folks, what I want to talk about today is adaptive control. And I think I'm going to make this a three part video series. This is going to be a, potentially a shorter video and hopefully not very much math. Just talking about adaptive control and why we need it. Before we talk about adaptive control, let's just talk about control in general, okay? So let's just do like a little quick review on block diagrams. So if you take your reference signal R, okay, so that could be a step command, a ramp command, a sine wave, whatever. I'm assuming I'm running it through some transfer function that I call f here to give me my, my model that I'm trying to track. So this is, this is really my tracking signal. This is a reference signal, and this is a transfer function that goes through there. From here, I've got some sensor that measures x, the true position of my sensor, and I compute the error signal between that, run that through a controller, and then compute my control input and push that into the plan. Okay? And this all works totally fine if a couple things, uh, you know, using a couple assumptions. One is that you've chosen your control system to be stable, right? So that you know that closed loop, at least if this is linear, or even non-linear if you're using my operand stability analysis, you've ensured that this system is stable. You've also ensured that the uh, tracking performance, that is the the time response, so if you look at your error signal, which is, um, I'm also going to call it x tilde, because um, that's the notation they use in the book, and it is uh, x minus x model, okay? And if these are functions of time, right, so this is function of time, x is a function of time, minus x model is a function of time, when you're looking at tracking performance, you're looking at this as a function of time. How well is your system tracking this signal, okay? So you've, you've designed your controller to do that. You also need to make sure your system is robust, and so what do I mean by robust? Well, if you take this plant here, let's just assume we have uh, some, you know, second order uh, mass uh, equation of motion. And so I'm going to assume that m x double dot equals u, okay? So it's a really easy equation of motion, and stabilizing that is super simple. It is marginally stable. It's got two poles at the origin, right? If you take a transfer function of this, you're going to get one over s squared. So you have a marginally stable system. Um, so, you, but you can easily stabilize it because it's linear. Now, robustness means a couple of things. Uh, in this sense, means I can handle. I am insensitive to changes in mass, okay? So the example is, is say this is a car, okay? In, in, in a car, you're going to have drag and, and friction and things like that, but let's just assume this is a car for, for purposes. And when you buy it, it weighs a certain mass. But if you get in it, the mass has changed. If you and your friends get in it, the mass is going to change again. And if you put pallets on top, it's going to change again. If you're driving a truck and you fill up the truck bed, the mass is going to change as well. And the issue with that is not necessarily the car. If you're running the car open loop, you, the driver, can compensate for it. But we, we humans, are very good adaptive controllers. Um, but if you have a cruise control system running, you need to make sure in this cruise controller that you can handle those changes. So if you put a bunch of junk in, in, the, in the truck bed, or if you... Uh, you know, have all your friends come over and sit in your car with you. You know, the car, the car's cruise control can handle that. And so that's what we mean by robust. The other thing is cost. So the issue with cost that I, I don't think very many people talk about is the fact that this sensor, right, costs money. And if you have a control system that requires 10 sensors, that's really expensive. And so, you know, can we design the controller to be stable and have good tracking performance and be robust with, say, only one sensor? Like, how can we do that, right? Um, the other thing is, is that this, this also here costs money, but I would argue that software is a lot cheaper than hardware. And so if you add more sensors, it's going to be a lot more expensive. So if we can make the controller more intelligent, that's going to be cheaper than installing an extra sensor, okay? And so that's control systems. So then why adaptive? What do I mean by adaptive? Well, here's the thing. If I 
design to control it here, mx double dot equals u. I could feed that linearize this system pretty easily. I could just say, let u equal m times gamma, right? And then this is my control law, which is not necessarily non-linear. It's linear, but I'm still using, I'm like feedback linearizing a linear system. If I use this control law and plug this in, I'm going to get mx double dot equals m u, m gamma, sorry. And the m's are going to cancel, and I'm going to get x double dot equals gamma, okay? And so when I have that, I've basically completely feedback linearized the system, and I can make gamma anything I want, which means I can make x double dot I want, whatever I want. Now, if you don't actually know what M is, right, if you just have an estimate, again, we need the system to be robust, let's say that I actually don't know what the mass is, and I actually only have an estimate of the mass, and I'm going to call that M hat. Here, let me, uh, let me just redo this. Okay, so let's, let's take it aside here, and let's say realistically, realistically, okay, mx double dot is still going to be equal to u. Those are physics, those don't change. But let's say u is now m hat gamma, okay? Well, if I take m hat gamma and plug this in, now I'm going to get mx double dot equals m hat gamma, and now suddenly x double dot equals m hat over m gamma. Now, if m hat is equal to m, then everything's all well and good, and those are going to cancel, and then everything's fine. If my system is robust enough, if m hat is off by, say, 10 or 20 percent, or however much the variation is, and I can handle that change, then my system will still have good tracking performance and it'll still be stable. But what happens if I have no idea how heavy this car is? Or say I want the exact same cruise control to work on any system out there. What if the m hat is off by 100 percent or 200 percent? Is there a way that I could, let me erase this here, is there a way that I could take the control law and actually update m hat? Is there a way that I can do that? And let me move this down here. I'm going to put e of t, x of t, minus xm of t, and then uh, this I'm going to call x tilde t, and then, uh, I forgot, I think robustness, or I think tra this was tracking performance. Tracking performance. Okay, and so I'm just putting that back there so I can, I can reference it later. But the idea is, and I'm drawing this terribly, let me actually draw this up here, is let me take my error signal and let me run that through an adaptive controller. And again, I'm going to make another video to show what that looks like mathematically. But can I update m hat? And so can I run the normal control law as it is? I keep the control law like this. This is all well and good. But m hat actually gets updated into the controller while I control this. And can I still guarantee stability, have good tracking performance, and be robust to changes? And actually, if I don't know what M is, and I can handle any mass under the sun, and I can estimate that mass perfectly, then my system's super robust because that means I can completely converge on the actual mass. It also means that I can do what's called parameter estimation, parameter estimation, because it means that I can actually estimate the mass. So say you don't know what the mass is, what if you have a robot arm and you want to pick it up and you want to estimate the mass? Well, you can just move it around and shake it. I mean, like if you pick up a bowling ball and you want to see how much it weighs, you're not just going to look at it, you're going to pick it up and move it around. And a lot of times you'll compare it to another ball and like, you know, move them around and kind of like see like how it responds to that motion. And that's essentially what you're going to do here. Now the cost thing, this is where the cost thing is interesting because how would, you, how would you get the mass of a vehicle? Well, if you got in your car and you added your friends and you put like mass in the uh, truck, the trunk bed, um, how would you get the mass of your car? You'd have to put it on a scale. I don't know how many of you guys have a scale for your car, it's super expensive. Now, if you're lucky, the variation of the mass isn't as much, so you can just have a very robust like linear controller. But if the mass varies by a lot and you can't develop a robust system, perhaps you need an adaptive controller to actually adapt to that large change. Like what if you have a helicopter and you're picking up something super heavy and you drop like 100% of the weight? 
you know, that would be a situation where you would need to adapt. What about an aircraft where you lose like 50,000 pounds of fuel? And so there's an area where an adaptive control definitely helps. Okay, so the, in the next video, I'm actually going to do a problem uh, start to finish and show um, this exact problem where I show how this a uh, trans it's not really a transfer function. I say these are transfer functions loosely, but these are really dynamic um, laws, these blocks here, and they take inputs and outputs, but these could be nonlinear too. Okay, so stay tuned for my next video and I'll show you how to do a problem by hand.